a meditation for Lammastide. Tis the season of John Barleycorn, god of the grain. Grain is an essential commodity of life in many cultures, and their religions reflect this. Rites to celebrate the transforming of the grain from planting to harvest are at the heart of many festivals. At the end of the cycle, John Barleycorn is cut down, a harvest sacrifice for the good of the people. In his rebirth each spring, we see the continuity of the cycle and the renewal of life. Close your eyes. A white mist gradually forms around you. As it clears, you find yourself in a garden. The garden that you yourself planted last spring. You remember doing the planting and notice that the fruit and vegetables are developing and ripening. You reach out and part the large rough leaves of a courgette plant to see the long shiny green fruit hidden beneath them. The raspberry canes are tall, almost as tall as you. And you help yourself to the juicy red fruit that hang from their stems. The tomatoes are not quite ripe yet, but the peas and beans can be picked. You snap off one of the pea pods and break it in half. The fresh green scent is released. You place the peas in your mouth and savour their sweet taste. It is a hot, humid afternoon. You can hear the loud humming of flies and the buzz of bees. There is hardly any breeze. You walk through the garden admiring the growth. Then go through the gate at the bottom of the garden and enter the woods. The flowing waters of a stream that runs beside you look cooling and you dip your toes into the water. But then you hear the sound of pipes in the field on the other side of the woods. You are curious about what's happening and you go to explore. You cross the stream using stepping stones and continue through the wood and make your way up the gentle slope to a fence around pasture land. You find a gate and open it and enter the field. The hay smells sweet and strong. The crickets are chirruping. They hop out of your way as you walk through the tall glass, the tall grass. The grass tickles your hands and rubs against your legs as you make your way through it. A hare scampers across your path and then hides itself in the undergrowth. The musical sound that beckoned to you is coming from the other side of a hill. With the excitement of discovery you walk on. As you reach the top of the hill and look down you see stretched out before you an endless vista of yellow grain. A gentle breeze causes the grain to sway lightly, creating a wave of wheat. Below you, you see a couple seated by a hedgerow. They both appear to be in early middle age. She has the wide hips and breasts of motherhood. He wears a thick yellow beard on his chin. He is playing his pipes for her, a wistful plaintive lament. You watch as he finishes his song. They stand and embrace. It does not appear to be a sad scene, yet you feel a sense of sweet parting. She gently smiles, touching his fuzzy cheek. You hear her call him John. He throws his head back and laughs at some private joke shared between them. The sound echoes through the field. 
He then kisses her goodbye and walks on into the field of grain, his fingers lightly caressing the tops of the sheaves as he makes his way further and further out into the field. He wades on until he stands right in the centre of the field, completely surrounded by grain. His outstretched palms lie lightly on the heads of the seeds. He looks over to where the lady stands. As she waves to him, he smiles and slowly starts to disappear from view into the grain. A breeze ripples the wheat, reflecting the sun in a wave of golden hues. When you look back to the lady, she too has faded from your sight. The silence is soon replaced, however, with excited, happy voices. People, men, women and children are coming over the hill, carrying baskets and scythes and rakes. They begin the harvest, singing merrily. You can smell the fresh hay as it lands on the ground to be raked into mounds. You too are handed a tool, the wooden surface smooth from years of use. You take it and help with the harvesting. It takes time for all the sheaves to be cut and bound, but finally you stand up and stretch. Your muscles may be sore, but you feel satisfied with the work you've done. You look around the field. It appears that the grain has all been cut. Then you notice just one spot, one small sheaf still stands, waving in the wind. A young girl, wearing a white sleeveless dress, emerges from the crowd, carrying a small sickle. Calls of encouragement follow her into the field. She approaches the sheaf and shyly cuts it. A cheer rings out. She gathers the fallen grain and returns to her mother. Together they quickly fashion a small corn dolly from it, holding it up to the crowd who respond with more cheers and singing. While the merriment continues, the young girl uncovers a basket filled with freshly baked bread. Its rich scent makes your mouth water. A keg of beer is opened up. Each person walks past the mother and daughter, taking a piece of cut bread from the basket and a glass of cold, brewed and fermented grain. Both are symbols of the earth and John Barleycorn sacrificed for the good of the people. The young girl smiles up at you as she hands you your piece of bread. It feels warm in your hands. You realise the bread contains the essence of the earth mother and the sun god. You give thanks as you bite into it, tasting the love that it holds. Enjoy your glass of ale and your bread, the fruits of your work and gifts from the gods. It gets cooler now and the light starts to fade. The sun is beginning to set. The harvesters are getting ready to leave for the day. They wave goodbye to you as they and you begin to make your way home. You walk up the slope through the wood, back across the stream, and you enter the garden, through your gate, and close it tightly behind you. As you do so, the sun disappears from sight below the horizon, and the white mist begins to close in around you once again. As it clears away, you find yourself back from whence you started. Open your eyes and put your feet firmly on the ground. <laughs>